Hello and welcome to Autoinform online magazine Diagnostic Workshop. My name is Frank Massey and in this feature we'd like to look at smooth running with common rail diesel. In particular how the engine performance has been affected with what are potentially injector related problems and how to begin the diagnostic process. Briefly let, let's consider some of the possible options as to why an engine, particularly diesel, would not run smoothly and how the computer tries to correct that situation. Possibilities are mechanical defect with the engine, mechanical electronic or hydraulic defect with the injectors and or a problem with dual mass flywheel. So any one of those three possibilities could cause an engine to run out of balance. In response to that the computer looks at the crank angle sensor and will try to adapt the fuel quantity and timing of each injector to best balance out any out of balance forces that are present. The task in this feature is to look at the possibilities of a progressive smooth and accurate diagnostic process. So I'd like to begin first of all with the most obvious one which is serial communication looking at actual live values of fueling quantity smooth running adaption through a serial platform. So let's begin with that process first of all. We've chosen a five cylinder Volvo um, quite uh, accessible injectors. One of the reasons we chose this to demonstrate this particular uh, feature on. I've already set up the manufacturer level uh, diagnostic tool so with this platform we can access all of the features that would be normally available through the dealerships and the manufacturers. I've switched the ignition on and I'd like to begin with actually establishing the identity of the vehicle. Now we can grab the VIN, in other words it's, it's identified this vehicle electronically from the PCM I can now go into a number of options. Now obviously I'm dealing with engine drivetrain and I now have a number, of, a number, number of options and in particular um, I should really begin by looking at diagnostic trouble codes. I mean always begin by looking at DTCs. My point is they may only lead you to symptoms not cause but for this particular module I'd like really to focus on injector testing. That's the whole focus of this particular issue. And we're going to deal with two specific types of investigation through the serial platform and through the hydraulic route looking at back leakage. And the point of this is to establish if the injectors are out of balance, whether it's a hydraulic problem with the back leakage or the spill or a problem from the nozzle end of the injector. And by using both of these devices, it should be possible fairly accurately to predict if there is an injector related fault. The rotation speed of a diesel is governed or controlled by fuel timing and fuel quantity. So any out of balance electric electronically or hydraulically from the injector will cause that problem. That's what we're going to take a look at. So let's go into injector testing. And Part of the manufacturer software suite <coughs> allows us to do a relative compression test. I mentioned one of the possibilities is a mechanical defect with the engine, loss of compression, an internal fault with the engine perhaps. So um, during the cranking process we can evaluate the rotation speed differential looking at the crank angle sensor. We can do a combustion test and injector correction test. I'm going to begin by looking at injector correction. So the first thing we need to do is to actually run the vehicle, start the vehicle, um, and then we can take some uh, actual live data readings. And we're ready. If you start the vehicle for me, please. So what we need to do now is start the process whereby it will monitor rotation speed and any differential relative to rotation speed. it's performing its calculation now. 
So as you can see, during this process of gathering this data, essentially rotation speed from the crank sensor, it's now come up with correction factors. Now correction factors are fuel quantity adjustment relative to each injector measured in milligrams per stroke of fuel delivery and is displayed either as a negative correction, in other words removing fuel, or adding fuel. And I think an absolute maximum limit of 10%, I think 10% is probably a little excessive, 5% or less would be ideal, and no correction differential at all would be perfect. These figures are not too bad. Minus 0.13 milligrams, 0 0.24, 0 0.79, 0 0.22. They're not too bad. We have one injector that has a positive differential. In other words, it's adding fuel to that cylinder. Now, this is the interpretation part. It could well be that that injector is not physically delivering the same fuel and the computer has, in effect, opened up its control cycle time, allowing a little more fuel to be added to the cylinder in order to increase that cylinder acceleration speed. It could equally be that the other four injectors are delivering too much fuel. Um, this is always the catch-22. We've only conducted that test at idle speed. There is a strong argument that you could and should conduct this test at different engine speeds. However, this calculation generally is only achieved at the lower end of the engine speed range. In some cases up to 3000 RPM, in many cases only as high as around 1500 RPM, but it would be a worthwhile exercise to set the throttle at a fixed speed, other than idle, and then conduct this test over a number of different engine speed cycles. That may help to form a decision whether this is injector related just at the idle speed end. If it was a perhaps potential dual mass flywheel problem, an equal and increased engine speed would smooth out some of those out of balance forces that can be caused by faults such as dual mass flywheel error. So that, that concludes that particular test for this particular engine speed. This is a similar test where it's looking at contribution again uh, from the injectors and once again if we engage we can see now that this particular test is now focusing on rotation speed not on fuel delivery so once again we're looking for rotation differential it's equally as useful as the last test. I prefer the first test, to be honest, because we're then looking at actual fuel contribution. So you might want to conduct this test once again at different engine speeds, whereby trying to establish if you do have a problem mechanically, you could also perhaps try, if you suspected, um, shall we say, a dual mass flywheel error, engaging gear and dragging the clutch and possibly then loading the clutch uh, and the flywheel so if there were any out of balance forces, you may see an improvement in this calculation. So, once again, uh, by all means use both. I've begun with this test because I think it's right and proper for the first analysis to begin serially. You may also want to drive the car on the road, perhaps actually putting load on the transmission may also be useful. But, as I've already uh, explained, establish what the maximum engine speed is for this calculation. And that's quite easily done because there'll become a point when the engine computer will no longer calculate a smooth running adaption and you'll just get a zero count when you conduct the test. So that concludes that part of the test. What I'd like to do next now is continue and do a back leakage test. The back leakage test will then identify if the problem is with the control hydraulically a fuel delivery through the spill port, or whether this out of balance is a nozzle related problem, because clearly a problem at either end of the injector will cause uneven running. So that the purpose of the test is in, in two parts, to be absolutely sure 
which part of the injector functionality is or is not responsible for that fault. So initially what we need to do is switch off, connect up the bank leakage tool and then we'll begin to test a hydraulic lift. First thing we need to do is remove the securing pins. There's actually no pressure at all in this circuit. So these clips in effect don't do an excessive amount of work in retaining this hose. These are actually quite robust fittings. In some cases these fittings are plastic and are quite brittle. It would be worthwhile stocking them together with the actual hose itself and then if there is an issue with leakage or breakage that can be very easily rectified. So this is the, the spill circuit and now there's obviously a spill from the high pressure pump and the rail so we need to clamp this hose otherwise we're going to get fuel everywhere. So I've clamped the hose and so no spillage can take place. We now need to attach the back leakage tool. Now this quite simply collects the fuel from each injector with the appropriate fitting. So these come obviously with various adapters for the different injector types and obviously up to six cylinders. And that now allows us to get that last hose out of the way. We're only using five cylinders. In effect now, rather than this fuel returning back to the fuel tank, we're actually going to collect it. There's no arbitrary uh, value to this discharge. What we're looking for is an even discharge across all the injectors with an absence of any air or cavitation from the injector. And once again, at idle, around 300 bar, that test is really only valid at those pressures. There is a, a very strong argument that at higher pressures, and this system, it's uh, CP3, which means the 1650 bar maximum pressure system, that we should conduct this test at higher pressures. Now, if we accelerate the engine statically in a workshop, we'll probably approach 800 bar or so, but clearly not 1650. There are a number of options that you could consider. We can drive the pump artificially. There are devices now available where we can take over control of the pump, therefore the pressure, um, to achieve what we call maximum system pressure. Whether the engine is capable of running under that, those conditions or not depends upon the difference in software and, and, and protection. Some vehicles will allow the engine to run at idle at full pressure, others will not. They'll kill the control signal to the injectors and prevent any further running. But it, it's an option you have. It would be difficult or near impossible to drive the vehicle with this test for obvious reasons. So we have adopted a number of means of driving the pump artificially just to see if uh, there is a problem at higher pressure with this back leakage function. So we're ready to go. Um, if we, now we can re-engage the same test. Let's go back and we'll do the injector correction test again. Uh, I'd like to start the car, please. Now, two observations. The primary observation is with back leakage. As the engine runs, it's going to take a little time. The fuel is starting to flow through the tubes. Yeah, a very obvious comment here is that these tubes should be all of the same length. Otherwise, this test would not have any validity. I'm waiting until we start to get a, a collection of fuel in the flask. I can begin a second analysis electronically. 
we can still have a positive correction on number two cylinder. So I'm noting a slight imbalance electronically, but to be honest, I'm quite impressed with the result of this particular vehicle. We have a near perfect balance hydraulically. So my interpretation of this is that that corrective error, and it is a mineral error to be honest, is more likely to be a nozzle related problem, not a hydraulic problem with that leakage. You can see that the flow is quite modest. Generally, when you have a problem with injectors, that would have filled up long ago. They fill up really quickly when the injectors are seriously hydraulically or mechanically defective and or have excessive amounts of cavitation in the actual discharge. This vehicle has none of that, so I would give this quite literally a 100% health check analysis on this actual back leakage test. So I think the next stage now with this vehicle would be to drive the vehicle on the road, monitoring smooth running at higher pressures and higher engine speeds, and then see if there's any differential uh, at different speed load ranges. Now obviously we're going to have to turn the engine off shortly, otherwise we're going to uh, overflow this particular device. So if we can switch the engine off please. So there we have the results, uh, quite pleasing, um, it is quite literally near perfect result, um, it's very rare you'll get a set of injectors any closer than that. Um, my view on injector repair is um, you can only justify repairing those which are faulty. The catch is if you have one injector rebuilt it may well then perform differently than the remaining, in our case, four injectors. Um, so I prefer to persuade the customer always to have all, all injectors tested and rectified so that when they come back they are in effect a matched set uh, hydraulically. Um, that I think is pretty obvious why we should do that. And of course then um, we can re-examine uh, smooth running uh, adaption. Of course, having corrected the situation, we should then go into adaption reset. In other words, where there are values stored for correction, once the new components have been fitted, then reset adaption correction, and then the computer, PCM, will recalculate where necessary any smooth running based on the new injectors that have been fitted. And that concludes the actual uh, test. Um, there are, of course, potentially other tests you might wish to consider, but the initial analysis is based on the use of these two tools, serial evaluation and hydraulic evaluation. And then the final analysis uh, would be injected out, uh, full bench test, at full pressure ranges, right the way through the, the entire injector performance range, uh, and including even spray pattern. We're obviously not looking at the quality of the spray pattern here, which is a, an issue with the nozzle. We're simply looking at rotational differential expressed as a fueling quantity and or expressed as a hydraulic discharge. So I'd like to thank you for joining me in this particular um, issue and I look forward to seeing you in the next magazine issue. Thank you very much.